Welcome to the Floral Design Institute Video Library. I'm Leanne Kessler, Director of the Floral Design Institute, and I'm here to chat with you today about gardenia corsages. You know, these elegant blossoms are just wonderful for a beautiful corsage for the mother of the bride. They can be simple, all by themselves and lovely, or you can easily accent them into the style of the wedding. And best of all, the fragrance of the gardenia will linger around the wearer throughout the evening. Now won't that be grand? To begin with, you'll want a fully hydrated gardenia. For tips on this, check out our library, The Care and Handling of Gardenias, and we'll go through all of the steps to prepare to this stage. Then you have two options in the mechanics. You can do the traditional wire and tape method, and you can use the Oasis Full Adhesive and use the glue technique. Both work equally as well. Experiment with them to see which is your favorite. When you work with your gardenias, you're going to want to keep your hands cold and wet so that you don't bruise or damage the petals. Now, I usually just keep a pan of cold water at my table as I work. And that seems to work out the best. That way I can just keep dipping, keeping them cold and wet as I go along. Now, depending on the look you're trying to create, you may want to remove this casing behind the collar. Now, this collar is artificial. Some are natural leaves, some are artificial leaves. I just think it's going to be a little heavy for this corsage, so I'm going to remove that. Then I go ahead and remove the calyx, just like so. Don't need that extra weight. Keeping my hands cold and wet. Then in the wiring and taping, I work with a 26 or a 22, or sometimes both, depending on what I want to make. And I use one wire, and I pierce through, and then just bend it down, just like so. So the pierce technique. Then I take a second wire, and I clutch. So I hold it with my finger, and then just wrap tautly around, then bend it straight down. Then next step is to tape, which is really a lot of fun when your hands are cold and wet, but they need to be so that you don't damage. And I just reach in, tape, get it started, and then go on down. Now, if you would like, you can do the whole stem wired and taped just like so, or you can go back and add a little protective casing, a collar again, maybe a single Gaelic leaf, something much smaller, a little more delicate looking, and then tape on down. Now I have that extra stem in there, so as soon as I get down a ways, I'm going to stop and clip that out. I don't need all that weight, and then continue taping. For efficiency and speed, something you really need during the busy wedding season, you can create a corsage base ahead of time. Here you can do this days, weeks, months ahead of time if you do it with everlasting materials. Then when it comes close to the wedding and the design day, just pop the gardenia right into place. So for my base, I'm going to start with two ribbons, a number nine with a linen look, and then a smaller ribbon, a one and a half in sheer. So I just take a bit of the linen, and rather than doing a full bow, just a loop and another loop. So a total of three loops. Cluster it together and wire it. And then cut the ends. And I like to use a dovetail. I think it looks a little more polished on this type of a corsage. Just cut inward towards the fold, just like so. You've got perfect little dovetail. Then set that aside. Go back to the second ribbon. Pull some off, and maybe make a little more traditional bow. Loops and loops, back and forth. Give it a clip, and wire it. Then I take and put the two together, just like so, and tape them. I don't want any bare wire showing, so I tape that. And then I don't need quite so much wire, so I clip some out so it's a little more delicate. Cut it down, tape on in. You can even add artificial foliage to expand the base a little more. 
maybe some leftover silk leaves from a centerpiece that you did at some time or another. You know, a lot of times the leftover silk foliage is just perfect. Just kind of set it in, maybe another leaf over here, maybe a tiny bit of ivy. That's gonna to be too big, I'm gonna cut that down. Notice I don't wire this. I just take the stems, tuck it all into my fingers, and then tape it together. Now if you're going to do enhancements, you could actually go ahead and add those now too. The Lomi floral gems are just grand. Maybe take two of them, tape them together. And then tuck that into the base as well. Don't worry about where they are. They're on wires. You can move them later. Tape it to the end. If you like a squiggle, go ahead and squiggle it at this point, And your base is done. When I make a corsage base, I even go ahead and add my fastening materials. Pins if I'm going to pin it on, or a magnet if I'm going to magnet it on. For a pin, I always do two, and you place them straight up, just like so, so that the ends don't come back out. That way when you go in to pick it up, you don't poke yourself. If you want to use a magnet, that can give you a little bit more convenience. You know, there's benefits to both. Pins, quick and easy, we're used to them. Magnets, you don't have to worry about snagging the fabric, so that's kind of nice. But it does have detriments. If somebody were to swallow these, a young child, it's really, really, really a hazard. So you want to make sure that they understand this is not a toy, it's for adults, and that children shouldn't be playing with these. Then also, they can affect a pacemaker. So you want to find out if the person is wearing a pacemaker. And to do this, you just dab a tiny bit of the Oasis Floil Adhesive onto the back of the corsage, and then use the smaller part of the magnet and glue it right into place. Now, it looks kind of ugly. I don't think it looks very polished. So I take a tiny bit more glue and put it on the back side of the magnet and then hide it with a single artificial leaf, just like so. The magnet will still stick through the leaf, that's not a problem, but it looks much more polished and it hides the magic of the mechanics from the wearer. As the wedding draws near and it's time to finish the corsage, adding in the gardenia, all you need to do is take your gardenia, if you're wired and taped it, have that prepared ahead of time, of course working with your hands cold and wet, and then just slide it right into place and tape it all together. Quick and easy because the base is already done. If you're going to use the glue technique with your base, you want to use the Oasis Floral Adhesive. Don't use hot glue, don't use any other type of glue. The Oasis Floral Adhesive will give you the strongest adhesion and you want to make sure that it's not going to fall apart. Then it's a little bit different. Go ahead and set it down on a table and start by putting a bit of glue on the base right where you're going to set the gardenia, just a dab of glue. Then, keeping your hands cold and wet, put a bit of glue on the back of the gardenia as well. And you want to let that dry to this tacky stage. It needs to start to bubble. That'll make sure that it holds the very best and then set it right down in place. Again, keep your hands cold and wet so that you don't bruise the gardenia. That way you can just sort of press down into the center, making sure it sticks close. Now, if you want to enhance using fresh foliage, because up until now I've worked with all permanents to make sure that I could do it ahead of time, you might want to add little bits of ivy Maybe even the Galax leaf again, take in that. Possibly even another little gem. So all you need to do is go back, add a bit of glue, let it dry to the tacky stage, so I just set it down for a second. So 
some water on that, dry it off because it won't work if it's too wet. There we go. Then slide it in and glue it over the top of the artificial leaves. That way it doesn't look as artificial. It still has the artificial base to give you stability, but now it has the fresh as well. Set them all in, making sure that they're secure. Then I cut the stem off of a single gem. Dab of glue. Let it dry to tacky. And then gluing it directly to the flower. Isn't that fun? When it comes time to package it, on a magnet, I'll take a little bit of cardstock or heavy paper and put it between the two before you put it on. That'll make it easier to pull it off later when you go to attach it to the dress. It comes off very easy, then you can just remove that cardstock. So again, just a tiny piece, set the magnet there, then spray it once again with the crowning glory. And yes, we did it when we did the hydration, but it's important to go ahead and do it again. I find that gardenias dry out so quickly. Let this dry to room temperature, so pretend it's dry now. Then set it in the box. Close it, and it's ready to go in the cooler until you're ready to deliver. You can find the supplies I used in this project on our website, flowerschool.com. If you have questions or problems as you're working or can't find something, feel free to contact me through the website or give us a call at 1-800-819-8089. If email directly to me is easier for you, feel free. My personal email is leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. I do love to hear from you. And as you create your designs, send me a picture. I'd like to see them. So have fun this wedding season and do something you love.